All right, well, we're going to take a look at uh, culture and gender and other influences, but um, although genetic influences are pervasive, so are environmental ones. Uh, nurture begins in the womb as embryos receive different or differing nutrition and varying levels of exposure to toxic agents. And sculpted by experience, neural connections multiply rapidly after birth. And so parental influence is more important, particularly when it comes to education. Um, and, and we just can put parental influences here. And specifically, uh, they have their impact on uh, in particular areas. And specifically, uh, that comes in the, in the form of education, uh, you know, how active a parent is educationally, asking questions to engage a kid, uh, certainly discipline, uh, how much uh, structure versus how much um, freedom is provided, which we'll talk about in a little bit more detail. Um, responsibility, uh, how do parents handle responsibility? What do they expect of their kids uh, in terms of growing up? and taking on more and more responsibility. What we see a lot of times is um, the, the issue of responsibility ends up being forced because of single parent homes. Um, another one is orderliness. Um, how orderly is, is the child's world and how they, uh, what they pick up on by the modeling of adult behavior. Um, the other one is charity. and. Uh, how charitable uh, parents are, and that too has a direct impact on kids as they watch uh, generosity versus um, being a Scrooge-like person. And then the last one is uh, what we do with authority. Each of these are really part of the parental influences that are part of the environmental influences in general. Um, now, the, one of the big questions at hand here is uh, asking this question, we can identify, which is what this is doing, what I just did for you. We can identify sources and uh, things, but the question is, is how? And this is a, a major question in most everything we do, is how does it influence, um, uh, how does it influence development? And, the stimulation um, in the early years is really quite critical uh, for brain development because um, after brain maturation uh, provides us with this abundance of neural connections, experience preserves our activated connections and unused ones degenerate. In other words, they're pruned. And so uh, uh, ultimately, um, external st stimulation um, is, is uh, significantly um, influential even in the brain connections that survive and it has led to a variety of, of uh, programs and things like that that uh, presume that with early external stimulation that that would then uh, lead to um, uh, higher levels of intelligence, higher levels of skill and so forth. Um, and one of the ways that uh, these brain connections or neural connections are made is either they're established, I got to get my E in here, uh, established because they're a little bit like a well-worn path in the forest. Um, after a while, you find your way around partly because there are paths um, not made by humans but by animals and it, it becomes a well-worn path through there and these pathways are critical in the, the learning process. So established pathways, the ones that are not used as often, they are what the word was that I, I uh, used for you is pruned and so they're they're not um, attended to. Oftentimes, they're even cut back. So actions 
um, strengthen neural pathways while others weaken from disuse. And we learn uh, to keyboard or skateboard with increasing skill as we pick up on these pathways, essentially. One of the things, again, and I, I keep using the, the Olympics because they're going on right now as examples, but um, one of the things that you see in so many of the athletes is something that you might refer to as muscle memory. And when you watch the athletes as they are getting ready to do a routine, whether it's in gymnastics um, or in swimming, um, they are rehearsing and their muscles follow suit. And in some respects, I think some athletes and certainly a lot of people would suggest that the mu muscles become so practiced. And of course, muscles move as a result of pathways in the brain they become so practiced that one action leads to another almost automatically without even thinking anymore. So um, this example down here of what happened with, uh, with rats uh, in terms of um, the uh, enriched environment that a uh, rat was exposed to and in this case, in this particular case, this rat had very little to, to interact with. And what you see on autopsy is we see this kind of neural pathway um, in the brain of the rat that's in an impoverished environment. On the other hand, you see the cages of uh, these rats. And what you see is uh, uh, a very enriched environment, uh, ladders to climb on, mazes to get through, ramps to go up and down. And essentially, what we saw was that more and more pathways were created here uh, that, that as a result of the enriched environment. And, and you could even watch them and in their actions, in their exploring behavior, you'd see significant differences um, between the two uh, uh, anim or sets of animals, if you will. Um, the, the one thing to keep in mind when we're talking about parental influence, and that's kind of the focal point here when we're talking about environmental influences, is that its uh, greatest, um, greatest impact really is on the extremes. Uh, so the greatest impact comes with uh, abuse, for example, and neglect. Uh, a lot of times we think of abuse as the worst one. And in many cases, uh, kids are, that are neglected um, suffer a silent uh, abuse. Um, it doesn't look like anything's happening, and that's exactly the point, really. Um, versus a loving, supportive family uh, and what happens within each. The essentially, I think if you were to, which we wouldn't do, but if you were to examine even the brain tissue of people that come out of these um, different kind of uh, uh, house home environments, you would probably find a very different story. Uh, but when it comes right down to it, uh, probably uh, uh, probably less than 10% uh, of of um, children's personality differences can be accounted for, for by environmental influences. So less than 10% um, are, are part of this picture um, that have an impact um, from the environment itself. Uh, the bottom line when we get farther down into development is that um, parental influence and peer influence are what you would refer to as complementary. So parental and peer influence uh, complement one another. So if a child is in a peer group that agrees with family values, then they will strengthen. If they're in um, a peer group that conflicts with family values, then a lot of times the peer group ends up winning out essentially. Um, but like I said, parents have a huge impact, particularly in this, these areas.